I am grateful to God. I know everybody has at least one reason to come before him this morning to say thank you. I may not know your very reason, but I know one reason why you're here. You probably haven't thought of it, but nevertheless, it is one reason why you're here. You say, what is it? You are alive. If everything is lost, but your life, you have every reason to say thank you. There's a song that we sing about it. Okukoleyo or something. If you ever hear anybody saying thank you, I think you'll be a dead man not to know that that person is alive. If you ever see anyone open their mouth and sing it, singing, I think you will be a dead person not to know that, that person is alive. If you ever see anyone, no matter how clumsily they are dancing, probably or probably. I think the one that will think they are dead is the dead person. It takes the living to thank God. It takes the living to praise God. Somewhere in chapter 6, by the grace of God, I will begin to read from verse 12. Glory be to God in the highest. Amen. I read. Now it was told King David, you know, it's Thanksgiving, saying, The Lord has blessed the house of Obedido. And all that belongs to him. Because of the ark of God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God in the highest. Simply put. Because of the ever presence of God. So David went and brought up the ark of God from the house of Obedidom to the city of David with gladness. Please circle it. With gladness. And so it was when those bearing the ark of the Lord had gone six spaces that he sacrificed oxen and fatted sheep. Then David danced hallelujah <laughs> before the Lord with all his might. And David was wearing a linen effort. So David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting. Please note, 
gladness of heart sacrifice of oxes dance before the Lord with all his mouth and shouted with shouting and with the sound of trumpet I mean except you are in the spirit or caught up by the same spirit I know what you will say because that's what I will say really David kill day kill day David come and take it David calm down calm down calm down David ah Yeah. But I want you to observe some things here this morning. Verse 16. Now, as the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, remember, the ark was not just coming. A lot of activities around the ark. There was singing. There was music. There was dancing. There was jumping. There was shouting. Hey! And then there was dancing. Even royal dance. With everything he had. Now as the ark, verse 16, of the Lord came into the city of David, Michal, Saul's daughter, looked through a window and saw King David leaping. King David. Leaping and whirling. King David. Before the Lord. And she despised him. In her heart. So they brought the ark of the Lord and set it in place in its place in the midst of the tabernacle that David had erected for it. Then David offered, watch again, David offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before the Lord. And when David had finished offering burnt offerings and peace offerings, he blessed the people. In the name of the Lord of hosts, 19. Then he distributed among all the people, among the whole multitude of Israel, both the women and the men, to everyone a loaf of bread, a piece of meat, a cake of raisins. So all the people departed, everyone to his house. That's the much I want to take care of. What do you tag this short message? I call it the attitude and the expressions of thanksgiving. We were not told that David went out in the thanksgiving, but we saw all that happened. We could pick his heart straight away. David. Now, to quickly fill us in, you remember that there will be the second attempt after David ascended the throne to bring the Ark of the Covenant in. The Ark of the Covenant was a symbol of the presence of the Lord. David knew that take the presence of the Lord away, I am nothing. Remove him, I am nothing. And again, you remember, that's why, I mean, it can be explained that when he was at the lowest of his life, when he was caught up with sin, terrible sins, and God was out indicting him through his prophet, there's one thing David just prayed for. He said, please, do anything. Don't take your spirit away from me. Don't cast me away from your presence. So he knew the first thing to do, let me get Come on, let me reference the presence of God who has brought me this far. Glory be to God. And so they made an attempt, remember? But it was a failed attempt. Why? Because they, they did everything that could be done. I mean, by the standard of the times, I mean, in terms of excellence, I mean, it was... 
But to see, no matter how excellent it is, you must do it God's way. No matter how much you pursue excellence, pursue it in the way and manner that conforms with the word. Because what happened was a genuine attempt to assist. The animals almost tripped and the ark was going to fall. And Uzzah who was driving the car, oh my goodness, probably just steady. That was all he did. He was in good faith. So no matter how wonderful the act may be, if it's against God's desire, and that's what the present age does not understand. This is all inclusion. That's right, of course. For God so loved the world. But God has his ways. And that was the problem. At that point, Uzzah was struck dead. Woo! And David, the Bible said, was upset. He got scared. And at that point, he said, no, we're not proceeding further. And where was that? Who, what was nearest? The house of repentance. The ark was there. In a period of three months, the kind of blessings of God that flowed from that place even the king heard. He went back and said, for, for certain, I know God is not angry with me. We must have done something out of place. He went back for the ark and found out where they went wrong and corrected it. It must be born on the shoulders of the priests. I'm just trying to tell you. And now, this time around, Glory be to God in the highest. This time around, I said, glory be to God in the highest. Look at it again. So David went and brought up the ark of God from the house of Abedidon to the city of David with gladness of heart. Look, if it's thanksgiving, if it's thanksgiving, you cannot thank God and be angry. No! They don't go together. You can't. When I was trying to put all these things together, I found that David wrote in Psalm 100. He just, everything here is captured in Psalm 100. I know what Psalm 100 is. Thanksgiving. That's all. That's the title. Thanksgiving. Shall we quickly turn there and see? Hallelujah. What a savior. Can I read? He said, make a joyful shout. Did you see shout there? Can you see shout here? It says, let it say, all the earth, no excuse, shout. <laughs> Hallelujah. Then he says, serve the Lord with what? If you are serving the Lord with grumbling, you are not serving the Lord. You are attacking him. Let me just quickly explain the call then. Mikhail fell in love with David. You know the story. When David was still a commoner, although anointed, anointed to be king, but Mikhail's father was the king. And so along the line, the king allowed the wedding. They got married. But see, what he asked for Dali was impossible. He set David up, but David conquered. He wanted the heads of Philistines. And thou made this lady fell more in love, so they got married. But the king's, the king's insecurity was too much that he would kill David. And so here was a lady married, but the father will kill the husband. Trouble. And David started running helter skelter. And while David was escaping from pillar to post, from rock to cave, and Mikal was alone at home. Please watch this. At that point, the father in order to really hurt David, took Mikal and married her to another man. Woo! I 
but years have gone decades when David finally settled down and now if I took part of the kingdom and put one of his sons to rule but now there was trouble they were now trying to merge with David they were coming for a meeting and David said the only way I will get, entertain this meeting is if you bring me Mikah my first love but David was king we went against the king's command and so they went to meet Mikah we are shall settled now forgetting the past and they yanged her out of her beautiful matrimony now and took her to David See, at that time it was Michal and David, but now there were other women at home, so Michal was coming to the list. But he was somewhere where it was only her and her husband, that's all. That was the only face the husband was looking at. He's now going to where the husband has so many faces to look at. Hey? So you can see that there were grounds for anger. There were grounds to be disgruntled. There were reasons. There were. And so I explained why when David came into the city dancing, ah, a hey, robber. Look at the king. In public. Before the people. Look at all the handmaidens of his servants were all there. Because at that time, what was happening was that he danced so much that his royal destiny took it off. And what was left was his ordinary cloak. Remove that royal thing, he looked so ordinary. But he couldn't be bothered. This makes me king before you, but I'm king before you. Before this, God! So without this, I'm sick. And before my God, this is not what is going to impress God. It is me. It's not what impresses men that impresses God. Not so much. But the moment he came dancing, glory be to God in the highest. <laughs> wow. He came with gladness of heart. And every five spaces, he said, wait. With what will I really say thank you? Say, please, slaughter, slaughter ten, ten, ten cows. Just give it to him. He will dance, they will advance. And that five spaces, ah! There's a song we say, say, how will I say thank you? Say, how will I say thanks for the things you've done for me? Things I don't deserve yet to did to prove your love for me. The voices of a million angels cannot express my gratitude, all that I am and ever hope to be. I owe it all to you. Just let me live the rest of my life and let it be pleased. Lord to thee and should there be any praise let it go to Calvary because with your blood woo, you have saved and with your power you have raised me before the Lord dance with all his might at that point nobody mattered hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. but the Lord and 
that was how the Bible says so David and all his house in verse 15 and the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord we shouted and with the sound of trumpet that was the situation that Bekar caught looking through the window she wasn't part of them she was distant in her heart and when she looked the Bible said she despised him. You cannot be grateful and despise. You cannot despise and express thanksgiving. But you see, David too didn't handle the matter well, but praise God for everything. He showed that he too was a man. Part of the expressions of thanksgiving was David offering the burnt offerings and then appreciating all the people. You know, it got me thinking. When I read that, and I call it my preparation. I heard of Waldo Emerson say something. He said, I woke up this morning with devout thanksgiving for my friends, old and new. Then I realized that actually thanksgiving starts, in the physical at least, it starts with appreciating people. You've come this morning and said, God, I thank you. Thank you, well, well, I thought that thank you, well, well, God will bless you, Apostle. And then you are saying, well, well, then you say, uh, Oh, thank you, nothing. You are deceiving yourself, you are not thanking God. That was the problem of my car. When everybody was lifting her, he wanted to lift her, she wanted to lift her, and I said, No, not this man, look at him. And David messed up too there. God bless David. We say, man, he was a man like everybody. Because when David replied, he said, uh -uh, I wasn't dancing before you, I was dancing before the Lord. <laughs> Who chose me above your father? <laughs> and the result was bad for me, car. You know, I was looking at these things and I said, interesting. David gave. The first thing was gladness of heart. The second thing, he gave, he gave, he gave. There are many expressions of thanksgiving. The third thing, he danced. And there was good music. There was singing. Somebody said that, look, more than 50 places in the Bible, we are commanded to sing. He says, you know why? Because when we verbally and vocally appreciate God, He said we reveal His glory to everything created around us. And I understand why the returning leper from a distance, from a distance, lifted up his voice. Well, probably because he couldn't come there, but he was already cleansed. He lifted and shouted and gave thanks. That's the way the Bible reported it. So I've just come back to. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you. Huh? Look at me. Hallelujah. It was loud. It was verbal. It was vocal. Let me read Psalm 100 in the message version. Beautiful. It says, On your feet now, applaud God. Bring a gift of laughter. Sing yourselves into his presence. Know this, God is God and good. God, he made us, we didn't make him. We are his people, his well-tended sheep. Enter with the password, thank you. Make yourselves at home, talking, praise. Thank him and worship him. 
For God is sheer beauty, all generous in love, loyal, always and ever. That's him. But let me talk about this thank you quickly. He says, thank you. I read, I mean, when I was preparing, they said a businessman, it was requiring that I give that anecdote somewhere. So a businessman was doing very well, and then he saw his business was becoming stagnant and um, sometimes falling. And then he put a post in the newspaper, the local newspaper, looking for somebody that can uh, advise him on how he could improve his business arm rapidly too quickly and you know and people started writing and he put a prize on it he said he would give that person five thousand dollars you can imagine how much that was in those days a lot of money and there were a lot of entries and he would try them similarly he would try them similarly but the one that really worked in fact the name of the one was given so it wasn't just a story it was a real life story the name of the one was Roy McCaddle all right he said the man wrote just one line he said, please get your staff to always say thank you. That was all. I'm talking the spirit of thanksgiving. They said, the reason businesses fail, how does your staff handle your customers? That can kill it in one day. I know what beats me. When business people know that, how much more we, the custodians of love, we who are love, people will come to church and will show them baby in church. I will show you. Show you. I was privileged to be number two of a very thriving assembly many years back. And uh, this very good friend of my late wife, trying to get her to come to church. Finally, one day, sophisticated woman, finally she came and she was coming. She got to the door and the person that greeted and welcomed her disqualified her from coming. What happened? She said, I like your church, but there's, I met this person at the gate. She said, yeah. I said, ah. What was she doing there? Oh, she's a worker. She's this, she's this. She said, she said, I'm not coming again. He said, you don't know her. I know her. On one occasion, it was at the parking lot in that church. By the time they finished wrestling there, the man put all his children into the car and they drove back. Teach your staff to say thank you. Once we were somewhere sitting in a beautiful restaurant, posh, to eat. And our host was not too pleased with the service. And she complained, and they came. And she complained, and they came. The third time, you could see attitude on those seven. And said, no, I want you to see your supervisor. I'd like to see your supervisor. And then they came, and they came to appeal. They brought some things, and she still complained. They went back. At that point, I said, I don't think I want to eat anymore. I said, why? I tried, I tried. When we go home, I said, I've seen in the television. When you make them get mad, they spit into your food behind you. Somebody else said, said thank you is the best prayer anybody can pray. He said, thank you expresses extreme gratitude with humility and understanding. A man that cannot say thank you is conceited and prideful. The staff that will always complain those two things to themselves. One, he will slow down your work. The organization will be slowed down. Number two, the person is sowing seeds that he will harvest in the future. There will be a barrier for him or her. Teach them to appreciate people. A leader will never be a leader if there are no followers. A business will fail if there are no customers. And always remember there are options in life. They say, no, they are stuck with me. You are a liar. We can only get stuck with God. Even God gives us our liberty. It's a matter of time. Yeah. 
Gratitude is a divine emotion. Where would David do it? All his, everything he had. He said, Lord, the Lord of God, with all your heart, with all your strength, with all your mind. I close with this. Maybe one more story before I close with this. I know time is, no, it's Thanksgiving. You know, my daughter is a technical psychologist. I thank God for that. No, I mean, she read, she read psychology. You know, she read, yeah. And she's practicing abroad. Uh, I don't know, days I, I'm smart too, I watch her. And you're talking and you're in a conversation. She's talking, she's smiling. But she's studying you. It took me a while to say, yeah, I know you, but now she's practicing. By the time some things happen, happen, I say, Dad, you see, this kind of behavior, you begin to analyze. What you don't see, they see. By training, so somebody said a clinical psychologist dealing with depressed people, suicidal people, will always start her counseling with one question. You say, what? First question she will ask, have you listened to and sing along with Christian music today? No. He said, that's why you're having crisis. That's why it's getting harder on you. No matter how tough, put the music on, particularly Christian music. Most of the songs that he or she knows, let it play, get it playing. You will see things begin to come together. Christian music. It's a command to sing. A grateful heart will always sing. The second question she will ask is this. Have you been to church this week? And if you have, in a right heart, have you participated in singing praises loud to God? There's a place for that. Psychology. As I close, Pastor Barton David was leading prayers and was saying certain things. Excellent. What Melody Beatty who said this? He said, gratitude unlocks the fullness of life. You may be the offended, but please, please, let the word of God dwell in you richly. Be filled always with the Holy Ghost, Ephesians, Colossians. You know what they do? They will generate songs and music in your heart. The bitterness will go. The anguish will vanish. Your creativity will resurface. That it unlocks the fullness of life. It turns what we have into enough and more. Is it really? I read the Bible. Feeling of the 5,000. Say, so what do you have? I know you are destitute of a lot of things, but what do you have? That's where Thanksgiving begins. Remember the widow that went to Elisha? Say, I have nothing. They've come to pick my children. And by my husband, he said, What do you have at home? He begins with what you have. Somebody said he's a wise man who does not grieve over the things he doesn't have, but rather grateful for what he has. He took the bread. He said, what do you have? They said, the little boy's mirror. He said, bring it here. Get them to sit down. I think, oh. Fret not yourself because for other, for other people. Gratitude will turn denial into acceptance. Chaos into orders. Confusion into clarity. 
cultivate the habit of singing, of thanking, of rejoicing in the Lord, serving with gladness. You can turn a meal into a feast, a house into a home, a stranger into a friend. Gratitude makes sense of our past. It brings peace to our today and creates a vision for our tomorrow. As we rise out of this place today, I know in the name of Jesus, you have a testimony. COVID, I understand. But that you are alive, you have something to offer. What? Thank you, Jesus. Thanksgiving and now but here you are and wait 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 in the regions of the down in the headquarters of the wicked they wrote your name in the list of those to be there but hear me wait 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 they are now beginning to realize wait wait that you are a covenant child of God hear me that as long as you remain in the place of praise and worship adoration hear me again death will see you and flesh in the name of Jesus uh -uh. the more the death arrow is shot towards you the more it is reflected seven times in the name of Jesus and I'm not joking some will say when they finish singing I'll go after them let them try you know what God assured me? He said, the one that will bless you. Watch them before the end of the year. The one that says, the one that is, no, 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 this one, he will kill, kill who? They will bury them. Hey, I say so. In the name of Jesus. He said, Pastor, you are praying. Wait, 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 wait. I'm talking of those who have covenanted to kill you. That's a covenant. That's a covenant. They won't change. So don't blame me. The psalmist says of God, he said, I will feed them with their own flesh. I will make them to be drunken in their own blood. He said, them that will curse you, he said, they are already a curse. Them that will bless you are already blessed. We are children of blessings. Everywhere you go, people get blessed. People have no choice than to bless you. I say, go in this your might in the name of Jesus. In this spirit, in the name of Jesus, I say, we give him praise. On your behalf, we give him honor. Ah, I say, on behalf of your household, we give him honor. He who has brought you this far, we see you to the end in the name of Jesus. 
your praise and worship will mount stronger and bigger as the day goes by. In the name of Jesus. 